Alrighty, hello everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I am doing a little spring cleaning and I hate having to do this because all these knives I love. I get to check out so many cool things, uh, whether it's seeing it on other people's channels, people sending me stuff. Of course, 90% 90, 90 of what I share with you guys, I purchase with my own money. So this is a very expensive hobby. But one thing that I've absolutely fallen head over heels for is modification. I am very limited at, into what I can actually do with modifying um, different finishes for the blade, for the titanium or G10 or whatever I'm working on. I want to invest in more tools so that one day I'm actually able to do a small custom shop and open it uh, to, of course, all my wonderful viewers. Or if you guys have people who want to get into the hobby and you're like, hey, buy this wonderful little platform of a budget knife it's like 30 bucks and for however much more you can make it look completely unique and super special and unique to you if because there are a lot of people that like doing that kind of stuff a knife while it is a knife and a cutting implement there are a lot of people that fall into the category of an enthusiast right that's why we're all here that's why you're watching some dude like me talk about freaking knives and why i'm selling them um, if you're new to knives, you're going to see that the price range is all over the place. I will not actually be talking about pricing because I don't have time to do that. And I'm still going to figure that out. There are extras. Some stuff here has been modified, but, uh, it's gotten to the point where some of the stuff is really just pocket jewelry and has been not really used recently. And I'm willing to let it go for the purpose of moving into a slightly different avenue in this wonderful hobby that is the knife community the edc community i want to be able to do more stuff for you guys but i'm definitely not made of money that's for sure so if anybody's interested in these kinds of things please don't ask pricing in the comment section please i will just end up verbally directing you to blade binge if i refer to it as nafcell i'm sorry i called it nafcell for like over a year and i've done so much business with him but uh, now it's blade binge, so I'm gonna take you guys down below. There are nine knives, and I'll show you all the little goodies that have been done to it, the things that it comes with, things that it won't come with, um, and just the current state, a nice up and closey of the actual state of each piece. And in each listing, I will be linking this video down for anybody who is not a viewer or isn't even aware that I have a channel and is just, uh, you know, purchasing things because I've actually had a lot of people purchase stuff for me that have no idea that I have a small channel and that's completely okay. And that's how you gain people through social media platforms. And I would consider Blady Binge to be kind of a social media platform. It's very uh, community oriented and I absolutely love the platform that it is. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna show you guys what's up. Alrighty, so everything is kind of spread out around the centerpiece of knives. Um, I'm going to kind of just move a couple things around. I set it up this way just to take a thumbnail picture. But some of these knives have things that kind of belong to it in a way. Um, but yeah, this is it. So my size comparison PM2, it's going away, unfortunately. Um, full size RSK with original goat scales going away my hinderer xm18 three and a half choil the devo buzz has its extra scales and the ones that i customize this could be vagrant my warncliffe elementum it was also another size comparison knife the vossi knives thornton that one's going away the Miguron Knives Moyarl, the crossbar log, that one as well. And then this big hunkin' freaking uh, white start knife is going away. So that's of course it, they sell. But uh, I guess we can go ahead and start. I'm just gonna leave these here because they're not really in the way much. My camera does a decent job at focusing. So this is a PM2, right? Nothing super special. This was the S90V variation. I forgot what retailer i picked it up from it might have been dlt trading back in the day it originally had the tiffany or teal uh g10 the peel ply texture g10 so they're not the smooth ones but these are factory spider co uh, scales it has the black uh, lanyard tube 
and the original clip. Uh, it wasn't really carried too much in this form, but that will of course be available for whoever purchases this. So the scales that are on here, including the clip, bring the price up significantly, but I do want to put in the listing that if anybody's interested in the knife with the original parts installed on it, I will have that as a separate price on the listing. Just please read the price. I'm gonna have the price as, you know, as is here, and include this, but early in the listing, I will state that if you want just the knife in its original state without all the crazy fancy modifications, it'll of course be at a much lower price point. But these are RG custom metalwork scales. I believe he runs a, a one man shop in Long Beach, California, and he's super backed on orders. Uh, this knife has been carried quite a bit, but I do baby this absolutely. It doesn't really get any significant use and you can see in the blade as well it's seen two sharpenings i never even bothered putting in a sharpening troll because i never actually you know use the crap out of it like i do my other spider coat knives so um this has just been something that i turned into pocket jewelry because at the time i thought it was a good idea but this is just kind of money that's sitting here so of course you have the semi-polished radial sun pattern with the matching polished titanium clip absolutely freaking beautiful um i've had this knife for quite a while and it has broken in quite well so that's nice for whoever does pick it up this little lanyard tube filler here i believe this is a piece of crystal mokutai and so it's uncolored it's in its raw state uh it's made by met and boss and um, if you guys are familiar with that name and the maker they have a shop that deals in all types of super high-end materials different crazy fit and finish everything made in the u.s which is really cool so this is a full high-end spiderco pm2 in s90v um, and of course with its extras so let's set that guy off here to the side so we can focus on the next piece this is my full-size Duggerter RSK MK2 G2 whatever quadratic equation shit. Um, this is a wonderful knife. It really is. I just don't use it as much as I probably could. Um, one of the main issues with this knife was that I had busted Omega Springs on this so many times, but I finally found a source to get good Omega Springs, and they've been in here, uh, you know, pretty pretty long for the most part and it's just fine of course this is still running on washers you can't really do anything about that uh it's seen two sharpenings probably but as you can see there is still plenty plenty of life to that edge and the knife overall is in absolutely wonderful condition the only thing is i, I do want to mention there are tiny tiny little scuffs there scuffs not deep scratches so the black hasn't worn off um and that's really it um also these are full contoured diamond uh textured scales titanium from og or original goat what i do have left over and it'll come in this little baggie uh these are four body screws that were extras original goat sticker a little card and an extra set of omega springs for that size of crossbar style lock so that is that guy um that uh full-size rsk used to have the rare carbon fiber scales i had sold those off a while ago because i just i didn't need them they were just sitting around so there is that guy i wanted to anodize this but i decided that it's just i i don't need to if i'm gonna sell it because you know then less people want to buy it if it's you know a specific color this beautiful beast right here, this is my Hinder Knives XM18 3.5 inch uh, choil, I guess, slicer. <laughs> so this is the slicer shape. It's not the skinny, it's not the fatty or anything like that. It has a triway system. Uh, this does not have any special upgrades. It is just as is, but I did modify a lot of the hardware and the coloring of the scales. So I've anodized the lock side here, as well as the clip. It was a purple, and then I did a bronze over it, as well as the filler tab. 
all the hardware, while it may look colored uh, in ways of titanium, and of course the little backspace pieces here, um, they are all steel. I just flamed them so to color match and just kind of make this, you know, look essentially. Um, what I have in here are the bearings, and it is stupid, stupid smooth. This is probably one of the smoothest knives in my collection. But that is also because it is a very hefty blade. And as you can see, it is very well broken in and super easy, super comfortable to reverse flick and has an incredible edge on it. So the blade uh, was not modified by me. This is their working finish. And uh, I have some stickers. There's a hinderer sticker. This is the person who assembled it. I figured hinderer crackhead fans will like that. And then, of course, the other parts of the triway system. I did have the washers in there. It was nice. It was cool. But I went back to bearings just just because. But uh, as you may know or don't know, Hinder and I've come in a cheapy little cardboard box. Uh, if I do have a pouch, I will put this in a pouch because it has, you know, little things that can kind of move around. And I don't want things getting shifted too much. So if I have a padded pouch, you will receive this in a padded pouch. If I do not have one at the time, it'll come very well secured uh, in a bubble mailer and then in a box because this is, you know, pretty high end item. So next one here, this comes as well with a butt ton of goodies. This has been on the channel for a long time. Um, I got these when they first were a pre-order item. So this is the Devo Knives typical little fake leather pouch with a little padding inside. You do have all the extras and goodies. None of these have been used except except the pocket clip. I had used the po the extra pocket clip on another knife and it is no longer you know available to whoever picks this up. So it has the wire pocket clip that comes on it. I did go ahead and purchase the uh, premium material backspacer. I think it is Mokutai. Uh, not Zerkutai, I'm pretty sure it's Mokutai. Uh, but yeah, so that's a little extra piece there. The original backspacer is the black one. It's right there. And again, all extra little bits in there. I kept it with the same logo on the pivot. And this has seen probably two sharpenings, maybe three, I can't remember. But it still has a pretty good edge. These are the original scales that it came with because this was the reverse tux variation. And I did this really crazy experimental uh it was pretty much an accident of anodizing and it came out very very organic and unique this is essentially one of a kind and super special also also i will be putting these in with the listing so when you guys see the overall listing price don't shit yourself just yet just understand how much money has gone into it but these are extra diamond milled or diamond knurled scales those rub marks are from the clip because i carried it for right-handed um so very faint they're not too too noticeable but you can see them right there a little sheen of rub right there but so the extra scales the extra uh premium backspacer piece i'm going to put this listed as is with what all these pieces are worth of course taking uh, the use into into account as well because these are not brand new none of this is brand new everything has been well loved and used but definitely not abused and this is pretty much how I keep them very well wrapped up so that way they don't rub or anything but uh, so yeah there is that guy it's a Devo Buzz with a lot of upgrades Again, this will be an item that I will specifically put in the listing, early on in the listing, that you can purchase the knife with the uh, without the premium backspace piece, because that thing alone, I think, was like 80 bucks or 85 bucks. It was something crazy. Um, so not everybody cares for premium materials like that. What the hell? Okay. Yeah, nothing like that. Um... Not everybody cares for the diamond knurled scales. Not everybody cares for the premium backspacer. So at base, of course, it'll be a lot more affordable than with all the goodies. But regardless of what you purchase it, as long as you purchase the knife, you will be receiving the extras, the extra hardware and parts, and the pouch. And whoever 
doesn't want the uh, premium pieces, the extra pieces that I purchased, I will sell those at a later date, uh, different uh, listing essentially. This is a Kubi Vagrant and this hasn't seen a butt ton of use, but I do need to sharpen it. So whoever gets this will get a screaming fresh edge. Um, and this does take a pretty sweet edge. This variation has S35VN. It is the uh, titanium variation. And I did some light modifications on it. I anodized the scales and I did this light bronze. If it's not your thing, then it's not your thing. But if anybody is interested and is willing to let me anodize this to a color that you may want or be interested in i can go ahead and do that for you as a as a free service essentially for purchasing this knife of course this has been carried a good bit no major marks or snail trails or really anything there was a little scuff on the clip but i have re-anodized it since then so it looks pretty darn good you really aren't going to notice it until you're looking for it or it's pointed out but there's that as is, the knife is in pretty sweet condition and is broken in quite well. It is also extremely smooth for what it is. Last couple here. This is my Warncliffe Elementum. I thought I was going to use this a whole lot more when I got it, but I decided to modify it and put more time into it, more money into it, um, mainly with the uh, titanium pocket clip. I got that as a little upgrade piece just to match and to get all T8 hardware. So you're only gonna need one bit to take the knife apart. I flamed the body screws, the studs, the pivot face uh, back over here and anodized the screws for the pocket clip and of course the pocket clip. Um, the scales and blade have been acid dark wash because it is one of my favorite looks. Um, I did actually open up the finger troll so it's a little bit more comfortable so you are losing a little bit of cutting edge but not much just for comfort's sake uh, but as is it's still a pretty wonderful knife the only thing is is that um, at least in my experience elementums are known for getting some detent lash relatively early on in their ownership so this is really no different even after modifications uh, there is still really the same amount of detent lash there, but it's damn near unnoticeable unless you're really, really nitpicky. So the time that's been put into this, the upgraded parts, but of course the use, um, all these things will be taken into account when the final price comes around, but it'll most likely be closer, if not under what this would cost brand new, just to get it out the door. And it has an incredible edge in it, of course. No upgrade to the bearings or anything, they're you know standard. This is the Vosteed Knives Thornton, and while I haven't had this for too long in the collection, it's seen one sharpening. Uh, the spring in here is a custom trimmed spring, so I wasn't a big fan of the spring that it came with, so I decided to take a larger spring and trim it, and that's really the only modification to this Thornton. Um, I got it to where I was happy with it. And this isn't a knife that, while, while I do pick it up to flick it a lot and play with it and maybe use it a little bit, I don't use it as much as I probably could. So as well, uh, this variation I believe isn't available at the moment and another batch is on the way, possibly. Don't quote me on that, I'm not 100% sure, but this thing sold out damn near immediately. So I could see this moving quite fast. Um, no modifications to the blade, no major scratch or rub marks or anything like that. It looks like it's still in pretty sweet condition. Um, one thing, if just for nitpicky people out there, I do want to mention that uh, on my sharpening system, I have a Wicked Edge sharpening system. My stones aren't the best at getting really, really tight up to that, uh, to the edge right over here. So it does look a little funny right there, but that is really because of how uh, the manufacturer does the plunge grind. It's not super great, but it is really what it is. So as well, it will come with the little extra Wayne Sharp World tag and the sticker that it came with. I do not have the original box, unfortunately, but again, all those things will be taken into account. Um, also understand that a cardboard box is just a cardboard box. 
so that as well. I'm on the side where it's really not worth anything because there are plenty of knives that are hundreds of dollars that do not come in a cardboard box and it's nothing really memorable so it's just a Vosti box but that will be reasonably priced as well. This guy right here so I have a love-hate relationship with it. <laughs> um, I hated it when I first got it. I love it now after putting a good edge on it and upgrading the Omega Springs. So what are in here are not factory Omega Springs because the factory Omega Springs are absolute dog shit regardless of what anybody says. <laughs> um, so I put strong Omega Springs in here and as well I am including an extra set of the exact same Omega Springs just in case at no extra cost. Um, this thing hasn't seen a butt ton of abuse or anything like that. It's seen one sharpening. It's still in great condition. The pocket clip is damn near pristine. And I would call it essentially a perfect pocket clip. All the body hardware is, again, in excellent condition. Nothing stripped, nothing wonky. Um, with the added strength of the Omega Springs, I was able to get rid of the side-to-side -side and... Uh, damn near all if not all the up and down play because when i first got this this had a butt ton of just issues just things that i do not accept at this price point uh but after a very very inexpensive little upgrade all those issues have gone away and this is an absolutely wonderful little budget knife i just don't really need it in my collection now if this was maybe titanium or maybe something a little bit spicier then maybe it might stick around a little bit longer but uh, i think somebody might be able to enjoy this more than i have so and of course with the added little goodie there last one here this is just a behemoth of a knife this is a white start knife i don't remember the model of it they are super inexpensive and i'm just going to price this just to get it the hell out of here there's nothing wrong with it absolutely nothing wrong with it it's just this is so much knife and i just absolutely don't need it and do not have space for it um so no side to side up and down non-existent it has a little removable uh secondary lock pin that you can go ahead and put into this side let's see if i can do it quick enough threads are okay it's not again it's, it's not a premium knife this is definitely a budget knife but what's cool is that you do have a secondary point of contact and you cannot disengage it um so this is a really hard use uh budget knife d2 blade material but it does have a good coating on it so it'll definitely last for quite a bit and stand up to some abuse the blade stock thickness on this is freaking thick with three c's um, it is relatively robust behind the edge um, and to the tip. I mean, hey, you could probably pick some stuff out with that. So it's a pretty robust tip there. Um, it's just, again, it's just a large knife. It's full G10 handles with nested steel liners. There are some uh, pockets for weight relief, but not too much. This is still a really, really hefty freaking knife. But if this is something you like and just want to pick up on the cheap, um, just to beat into the ground and see what D2 can really handle why not um i never sharpened this this still has a factory edge and while the factory edge on it isn't too great i didn't use it too much so there's that you are going to need a proprietary bit or if you want to test your luck you can use something else uh, in its place to unscrew it i did use a small flathead to uh, unscrew it to get to the inside to clean it out this has multi-row ceramic bearings, which is very impressive for the price of this knife. Uh, that's why it is so smooth. It is also a very hefty blade. So there's that. So that's, that's it. That's freaking it. So nine knives, they all have a lot to them, most of them. And of course they will be priced reasonably, but of course not given away for free. That's for sure. I need to make money somehow. So that's really it. If you guys like this video, thank you so much and leave a like down below. I will be posting this video shortly after everything is up on NAF sale so that, of course, people that see the listings can go to this video and just watch it um, or go to the knife that they're interested in, of course, because there are nine of them. Um, with that being said, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much. I appreciate all your support and your patience, of course. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing because I play more videos and content coming your guys' way. 
and have a wonderful rest of your day. I said that like two, three times already. <laughs>